Hi there, just a quick indie car today as I'm sort of between appointments today. But uh, two things I think that are worth talking about today. One is the coronation of the Royal Spaniel coming up in the next few months. And also the British car industry and what's happened to it since Brexit. Figures published today show that the British car industry has actually lost over 50% of production since the start of the COVID pandemic. And this was actually part of a steady decline which had occurred even before uh, COVID struck, mostly due, of course, to Brexit. With the United Kingdom's industries now unable to export freely to Europe, the United Kingdom itself has become a very, very nasty place to do business. And of course, it's driven away much of the, the much needed investment in the British car industry, which was required in order to take advantage of the new emerging market for electric cars. And that, of course, is not the end of the story because um, there is also a chip, uh, a microchip shortage in the car industry, as everybody knows. But that's not the primary reason for this. America has just announced that uh, it's putting together a new piece of legislation which will favour, in other words, in terms of taxation, uh, the purchase of cars, electric battery operated cars, which are manufactured only in the United States. A measure of protectionism which has started to take root all across the world. The uh, European Union is set to follow suit by allowing uh, countries of the European Union to invest personally, in other words, public money be put into supporting their car industries as well for their own domestic markets. And that leaves the United Kingdom alone in the world, unable to trade equally with either of these two superpowers. And with both of these markets now largely inaccessible, it means that all of the investment in battery-powered cars and their production is basically flowing to America or to the European Union. And Britain is being given a big body swerve. And that is causing basically things to shut down all across the UK, most notably in the north of England. The Nissan plant uh, has not been active for a long time. The Vauxhall Astra hasn't been manufactured in the United Kingdom and is unlikely to be in the foreseeable future. And the only battery factory which was supposedly going to be set up in the United Kingdom has failed due to lack of investment. And that all tells you everything you need to know about the state of the UK at the moment. The Tories have trashed the car industry. They've trashed virtually every uh, exporting and importing business in the UK, simply to please a few very far right wing uh, Tory Brexit extremists. So that leaves the UK in a terrible financial position. And this is all the more kind of um, unfortunate, really, since Prince Charles, sorry, sorry, the Royal Spaniel, King Charles, has now decided that despite the fact that the palace decided, well, had thought that they would do a stripped back coronation to show some solidarity with the poor peasants who are now having to starve and freeze to death and are losing their jobs because of Tory mismanagement and vastly high prices in a very energy rich country. It looks as though uh, Prince Charles has opted for the full bells and whistles coronation that he's always dreamed of. This is a man who's so far removed from the rest of us that I don't think he can even see us from up where he is in his ivory tower. But he's decided he's going to spaff at least a hundred million pounds worth of our money on this lavish party while he gets a new jewel encrusted hat stuffed on his head by the Archbishop of Canterbury. And Really, is this the time to be doing this? Prince Charles is supposed to be the man of the moment, the man who is the modern monarch, the man who is uh, supposedly uh, championing the green future of the United Kingdom. And all the while, he's wasting public money on a massive, unnecessarily lavish bash just to celebrate the fact that he's king. This is something we've already known about for several months since his mother died. So as I'm paraphrasing basically Paul Kavanagh Moss in here, we have Not My Spaniel basically pulling the stops out, wasting all this public money while the peasants are suffering as usual. It's like living in a medieval nightmare. And in fact, the only way really Scotland can do anything about this, of course, is to become independent and leave this anachronistic pantomime behind. Britain wants to live in its medieval past. Well, I say Britain, I really mean England. England is fascinated with its history and insists even in its parliament of living at least 200 years in 
in the past. Scotland here, well, we want to be part of the future, and the only future we can really generate for ourselves is if we release ourselves from the bondage of Brexit and get back to trading with the EU, and that really requires us to become independent as soon as possible. In doing that, we will be able to attract inward investment to Scotland, and for the first time in, what, decades, at least 50 or 60 years, Scotland will have a new car industry. Now, there is a small car manufacturing plant has been set up in Scotland, manufacturing electric off-road vehicles, which is a good start, but what we really need is a mass production facility somewhere in Scotland, in fact, in several locations across Scotland, along with a major uh, car battery manufacturing plant here. That way we can no, not only manufacture cars for ourselves but for other countries as well and export them into the European Union without the usual taxation and tariffs charged. So we have a great future ahead of us. The only thing that's holding us back are people like the Royal Spaniel and obviously people like the Tory party who insist on making Britain a backward, starving medieval state, basically they're taking us back hundreds of years into the past where the peasants starve to death while the monarch sits on his throne and basically says, let them eat cake. And that's where we're at with the UK at the moment. So it is high time the people in Scotland woke up and thought, well, this is the 21st century, should we really be doing this? Do we really need a king at all? Is it actually doing the country any good? Well, no, it's not. The only thing that's doing the country any good at the moment is the fact that Scotland is manufacturing 25% of England's electricity for free. And that is something which we need to talk about with the English government after we become independent, because giving them electricity for free is not something we want to be doing in the future. Anyway, this is just a quick uh, IndyCar today. I'm off to do some actual work and try and make some money, but I'll be back again tomorrow. In the meantime, keep the faith and remember that Not My Spaniel is wasting your money on a fantastic three-day event with glittering jewels and all the rest of it, which you are paying for whilst doing absolutely nothing to help you with your energy bills, your food bills, and the loss of jobs that is inevitable from Britain's exit from the European Union. In the meantime, keep your faith, and I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye for now.